Um, here are some logistics about the class that we visited. Uh, we taught our lesson plan to a class of 24 students in the fifth grade, gifted and talented education class. Our lesson plan involved 16 performers with the rest of the class watching and participating in other ways. So our goals for the installation included engaging students in collaborative discussions, using evidence to ask questions about the scene, develop close reading skills to guide the questions, and performing the scene with their close readings in mind. And these adhere to several California Common Core standards as listed here. Um, for the first part of the lesson plan, we used a warm-up a warm-up activity designed by our team entitled Moving with Punctuation, which Gina mentioned earlier. Um, and it's adapted from the Walk the Punctuation activity in Thompson and Turkey's book, Teaching Shakespeare with Purpose. The second part of the class consisted of a mini unit centered around themes of friendship and as you like it, um, adapted again from Thompson and Turkey. So for the Moving with the Punctuation activity, um, this activity students were given a handout with an abridged version of Jaquie's All the World's Stage speech from the play As You Like It. They were asked to mark all of the punctuation in the scene on the handout before the performances, circling all punctuation marks and then drawing arrows to any full stops in order to emphasize them. We asked two, two, two student volunteers who performed a selected movement with every full stop as the class read along the scene with the carrier of the script displayed on the platform itself. This round was then followed by a discussion as a class about the game and the script. The second round had another two performers, but this time the students performed movements with every punctuation mark. And then the class discussion, students learned about the importance of punctuation use and proposes when used with Shakespeare's language. Alright, and then in this activity, um, students were given a script with two sides, A and B, for an abridged version of the scene in which Rosalind is banished. In the first version of the script, Celia is absent and Rosalind faces Duke, Duke Frederick's wrath alone. We edited it for that. Um, students read the scene as a class before the performances, and then in the first round, two students performed uh, with the class reading aloud along with the karaoke script. Students then participated in group discussions using evidence to explain the dynamics between Rosalind and Frederick in the scene that they performed. Then Celia was introduced to students with a family tree diagram, as you see, uh, to explain the re relationship between Rosalind, Celia, and their fathers. The new team explained that Celia in this version of the scene is present um, but cannot speak and they were asked what that might look like. Um, and then three students performed the scene with Celia present but not speaking before returning to group discussions about the change in dynamics with the introduction of Celia. And then finally three new students were asked to perform script B in which Celia finally gets a chance to speak up. Uh, they ended the mini unit with a discussion about friendship and what that looks like in the scene. And then for our observations with the warm-up, uh, we noted that the collaborative work of the students was really interesting and engaging. Um, they reminded each other to move and perform. Uh, particularly interesting were questions centered on the language of the scene, including questions about certain words and their meaning. Uh, we also noted that we needed to include more scaffolding questions in order to get students to think critically about the purpose of punctuation. Um, students were asked to think about which line had the most punctuation, to which they responded that the last line was most heavily punctuated. Um, students were surprised about the amount of punctuation in the line about death, because they felt that death is simple, and listing things is not simple. Alternatively, other students remarked that the amount of punctuation was not surprising, as death is intense and there's a lot happening. Uh, students were asked to read the last line together, emphasizing pauses, and they remarked that it seemed like what happens when you run out of breath. What we found particularly fascinating during the mini unit were the students' ability to pull from both the script and the performances themselves in order to formulate their own evidence um, to serve as answers to the questions that we posed to them. The family tree diagram seemed to prompt the students to think about ideas of family and relationships. As, as they read through the script, they would pick up identifiers and words used for that. Students were asked to connect the scene to personal experiences, for example, moments when they have to support a friend or how they feel when they or their friend is being yelled at. When prompted with questions about how the characters were feeling during the scene, students were able to produce a variety of explanations for this. And their perception of emotions were reflected in the performances themselves as the student performers moved in ways that demonstrated anger, for example, drawing their fists or flailing gestures that they frustrated or angry at the other person. In small group discussions, students asked what questions beyond the scope of the scene itself, for example, where is Rosalind's dad and what happens in the rest of the story. Given that these students had little to no familiarity with Shakespeare, some developed an interest in learning more beyond the scene and beyond the play itself. And then for surveys, what we did was we used a Likert scale in which students were asked to mark the extent to which they agreed or disagreed with the statements provided. 
Ask the question the following are the ones we deem the most pertinent to our lesson goals. Firstly, the statement, the first statement you will look at is this exercise helped me better understand and or appreciate Shakespeare. This made us think about how we can further engage the students using the game in order to allow for more understanding and more appreciation. And the second is as a result of this exercise, I thought more about how an actor might move their body when performing the scene. Given that Play the Nade is a platform that traces movement, we are pleased to see that a significant portion of the students agreed that the exercise provoked thought about movement and performance. It's important to note right now that what we saw in our observations of the close reading practices utilized by the children may conflict with some of the results we see here, as what we saw as active engagement, the students might not have. Um, but that being said, for question three, as a result of this exercise, I paid more attention to the language in the scene. Student responses were fairly even amongst the categories. Um, to engage more students with the language, we'll look into making lesson plans, which scaffold more close reading practices. Um, and then for question four, as a result of this exercise, I thought differently about the themes of the play. The majority of the class either did not agree or did not have an opinion about this question, suggesting that the lesson did not contribute to a further understanding of themes of the play. As this was their first reading, um, it follows that students would not feel that they know more um, about the play as a whole. However, the lesson plan did focus on themes of friendship, and we were hoping that they would kind of key into that. So we plan to make this a stronger aspect of our lesson plans in the future. So then final remarks and an overall look at our installation. We observed an impressive display of close reading by such a young age group, and we're pleased to see close reading both the text as well as elements of the performances using the play learning platform. Students also seem to have fun and enjoy the game itself, which is always a good thing to see. Their teacher, Ms. Pesmark, also had a positive response, praising the lesson plan's focus on punctuation and language, as the students tend to acknowledge these things when reading, but they usually don't look further into them and find them as to why they're important. So for areas of improvement, um, based on student responses and our observations from student performances, we believe that we need to integrate theme a little bit more clearly into our lesson plans. We also noted that we needed more scaffolding questions, as I mentioned earlier, to guide the students to look for, to the text for evidence. They're a young age group, but they're capable of doing it as they demonstrate it. So we need to kind of highlight that in our lesson plans. So we propose creating such scaffolding questions to include with each of our lesson plans, listed right there for the teachers to pull from if they need to, so that they might have them as they conduct their lessons. Thank you very much.